Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's Wednesday Chapel. It's great to see you all this morning, even on a chilly morning. My name is Matthew Girdle and I am the vicar here at St. Luke's. I, that's all the greetings I have for you this morning. So let's stand and sing our first song. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.
pray with me. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, your name is holy and you have kept your promises to all generations. Help us this morning to hear your word and take it to heart that we may live for you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. My question for you this morning is, what is a promise? Take a moment to think about it. And then when you haven't, think you have an answer, raise your hand. What is a promise? A promise is when you are doing, doing something that you, that you are actually going to do. When you're going to do something you're actually going to do. That's a pretty good answer. Keep thinking. What would you say a promise is? A promise in, is when um, you have someone that said, can you do this? And you say you can, so you do it one. Right, so you say you're gonna do something and you're gonna do it, we'll take one more. A promise is something that you promise you'll do. You promise you'll do, yeah, it's something that you're gonna do or maybe that you're not gonna do. And it's something that you said you were gonna do, so you gotta do it, so. A promise is a commitment to do something or not to do something, and promises are made by people. The reason why I asked this morning is because I wanted to talk about God's promises. But first, I need to ask you this. When someone makes you a promise, what do you have to do to make sure that promise comes true? I'll give you an example. Your parents this morning, they drop you off, and they say, I'll promise to pick you up at 2.20 this afternoon. It's Wednesday. What do you have to do to make sure they keep that promise? You say, okay, Mom, you know, I'm going to make sure I work really hard on all my assignments. Or, or maybe you say, well, I'll make sure I'll stay out of trouble to make sure you keep that promise. Well, no. When someone makes you a promise, you don't have to do anything to make sure that promise comes true. All you can do is remember and trust in that that person will keep their promise. Now, I understand sometimes things happen. Maybe your parents get stuck in traffic and they're a little late. But most of the time, when people make promises, they intend to keep them. And, of course, we know that that, that doesn't always happen, that sometimes things change. But our God, who is in control of everything and is unchanging, always keeps his promises. Throughout the Bible, isn't that uh, a theme uh, of, uh, of God working? That God is keeping his promises. The Old Testament is filled with examples of God keeping his promises. You've probably heard of most of them in, in, uh, in your class, but just a few are, are Abraham and Sarah. What did God promise them? A son, even when they couldn't have kids, and uh, God promised Moses and the Israelites to go to the promised land. Imagine that. And many, many times God promised that he would save them from defeat in battle when they were led by Joshua and all the other kings. But what was the big promise that everyone was waiting for in the Old Testament? Well, it's Jesus, right? And yeah, everyone was waiting for Jesus. And, and even when the people weren't faithful, when they weren't trusting in God's promises, when they weren't remembering God's promises, God was still keeping his promises to them. Not only does the word of God contain many examples of God's keeping his promises, <clears throat> but it also, God also says countless times that that is who he is, that keeping promises is so important to him, it's part of his identity it's just what he does. God keeping promises is so central that that is the reason why you can be sure that God loves you. 
God's keeping his promises is the reason why you can be certain that Jesus loves you, that Jesus is always with you, and that Jesus has forgiven all of your sins. You don't have to earn Jesus' love. You don't have to prove that you really deserved Jesus' love. Jesus loves you because God says so. And we remember and trust in that promise. So what are we supposed to do? If God always keeps his promises, and, and we're just supposed to remember and trust in those promises, well, there's many things we can do, but we shouldn't forget that remembering and trusting in God's promises is loving God. Our text today uh, is a story, uh, is a perfect example of that. It's the story of when Mary found out that she was going to give birth to Jesus. And when, when the angel Gabriel said that to Mary, Mary sings this song, we call it the Magnificat, and it's a story of what God has done for Mary, what God does for other people, and how God has always kept his promises. Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Mary talks about how God has done a great thing for her, that, that she is going to give birth to Jesus, the Savior, the fulfillment of God's promise from the very beginning when, uh, when humans first sinned. And how God does great things for all other people. He helps those who know they cannot help themselves. And God's promises are kept through all generations. So just like Mary, she loves God by remembering and trusting in God's promises. And we do too. So if we love God by remembering and trusting in his promises it's probably a good thing to know what those promises are, right? But well, does God promise you a new bike? i shake your head no. Does God promise you to get an A on the test? Well, to know what God's promises are, they're found in God's word. So take a moment and think, what are some promises that you've read in God's word or you remember? And I'll ask for a few if you can remember them. Bonus points if you know the Bible verse. There, there, there was a two father and mother, and they were like 100, and God, God promised them that they would have a baby. Right. Abraham and Sarah. God promised them that they would have a baby. That would be a good one to remember at some point in life, maybe. That he always loved you. That he always loves you. That's a great promise to remember. What do you got? That he will never flood the earth again. That he would never flood the earth again. That is a good promise to remember. That when um, Moses departed the sea, um, um, they, um, he kept his promise that he will open the sea to let the people go to the, uh, the other promised land. Right. God saved his people by taking them through the sea. Last one. After dying on the cross, he promised that he would um, raise three days later. Oh, yeah, Jesus promised and said that he would rise from the dead, and he kept that promise, and that's great for us. All right, well, I'll take one more from this side. All right, what's one more promise? Um, it's a promise that the devil made. Um, the devil promised that um, they would get the knowledge of God if they ate the fruit. The devil promised, well, the devil tempted Adam and Eve. But God promised a Savior, even though they did not listen to God. Okay, so those are a lot of great promises. And there's even more that, are, that you can find in God's Word. 
And that's why it's so important that we study and remember God's word is because we can remember what God has promised to us. And by remembering those, we love God. And that also gives us strength when you're facing times when you think that you might be all alone or you might be scared. You can remember that God has promised that he will always be with you. The last thing we need to talk about about God's promises is the timing. The thing is that we know that God always keeps his promises, but we don't always know when those promises will come true. So there's one example I'm thinking of in particular, and it's a lot of people's favorite Bible verses, and if it's yours, that's okay. It can still be your favorite. But the verse I'm talking about is Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, for I, have, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And this is a great promise of God, and it many, gives many people hope. But I also need to remind you, everyone that we don't always know when God's promises will come true. Abraham and Sarah, they had to wait 25 years for the birth of their son. And from just from Abraham to Jesus was 2,000 years. And in Jeremiah 29, 10, it says that that's going to happen for the Israelites after 70 years. So we don't always know when God's going to keep his promises, but we do know that he always does. And that we love God by remembering his promises and trusting in him. And by remembering God's promises and trusting in Jesus, well, that is what we call faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you always keep your promises. Help us to, to learn and read your promises and, and help us to remember them. So that in times when we are scared or alone uh, or, or just need comfort, that we can turn to your word and turn to you who al- because you always keep your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we'll collect our offerings. For our offering announcement today, and once our acolytes are ready, um, once they're ready, you can bring your uh, offerings forward. But our January offerings will be for the Redeeming Life Maternity Home. Redeeming Life Maternity Home is a safe, Christ-centered home in Sanford. It is for single woman, women who are in a crisis pregnancy. Through the center, these women find help, love, and support for themselves and for their children. We will be collecting money donations that can be used for pur- to purchase items for the mothers and their children. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Receive the blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. I need a volunteer. Can you help me out? All right, we're going to do our chant this morning. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us. We love God because he first loved us. We love God. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We love others. All right, you can go ahead and have a seat. Our athlete of the week this week comes from our girls' basketball team. Uh, she is really becoming a team leader on the floor. She sort of runs our offense, and everything sort of goes through her. She's one of our leading scorers, also one of our top rebounders on the team. This week's athlete of the week is Hannah Adamchek. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Where's my, there's my helper coming. Come on, helper. Are you coming? I only have two hands, can't do it alone. All right. So Mr. Register had to step out uh, just a few minutes ago, so I get to do doers today. I haven't practiced any of the slips or the names, so if I make a mistake, sorry about that. But our first doer today comes from KB. Exactly. 
helped another child pick up her crayon box. Presented by Mrs. Lucas, Kyla Felici. Where are you, Kyla? There you are, right there. Go Wildcat! Oh, great job. Stand right up there. All right, come on, you gotta be prep, brother. Come on, there we go, all right. All right, next up from 1C. For being a respectful leader at Advent rehearsal. Way to go. Presented by Mrs. Matson, Camille Germain. Where's Camille? You're right there. Go Wildcraft. Outstanding. Thank you. Got to get the perfect picture, right? Perfect picture. Okay. All right. Next up, this I think was one from last week where she wasn't here. So we're going to present it again uh, from 2A. Picking up trash on the playground during recess. Presented by Mrs. Sehofer, Isabella Ali. Isabella. There she is. She's here this week. All right. What do you say? Go Wildcats. There you go. All right. And also from 2B. She works hard to do her best and always shows Christian love and respect to those around her. Presented by Mrs. Schultz, Sarah Calvo Chumbi Mooney. There you are, right in the middle. All right. Go, Wildcats. You guys can move up to the front right there. Come on up a little bit. Come on, perfect picture. All right. All right, next up from 3B. And normally there's little check boxes, by the way, that you check. Whoever this is just drew a line and said, all. Thank you for taking the initiative to clean paintbrushes, lids, and pick up trash. That is a messy job, and I appreciate your help. Guess we know who that came from, from our teacher, Mrs. Howard, to Emily Zedeker, 3B. Next up, from 4B, helped other people to finish their science fair board. Doing your own is hard enough about helping others to finish theirs. Aubriana Blaga. All right, Aubriana, let's hear it. Go Wildcats. Excellent. All right, moving on. Fifth grade, 5C, held the door for a teacher he saw coming all the way down the hallway. Nice. Presented by Mrs. Correo, Jackson Wainwright. All right, Jackson. That's just a great name, Jackson. I love it. Go Wildcats. If you were my son, you'd be Jackson. Jackson, think about that. All right, on to middle school, 6B, always willing to help other people check for all sorts of things. Presented by Mrs. Bailey, Justin Hone. There's Justin, all right. Go Wildcats. There we go, go Wildcats, I love it. 7B, always willing to help a fellow classmate a true role model for others. Beautiful. Presented by Mrs. Nickel, Sophia Byler. You can make it. Go Wildcats. All right, we're getting down to it. We got Two, we love our eighth graders so much, we get two eighth grade doers this week. Okay, I'm, who is this supposed to be? There's two names on here. Where's the other slip? Oh, I see, I got it. Let me make sure I got this right. I don't want to make any mistakes. I'm going to check the list. All right, we got it. Very confusing. Don't confuse Mr. Jackson. He doesn't like it at all. All right. Volunteered to fix the classroom pencil sharpener that was very difficult to fix. 
outstanding two gentlemen we're going to award. The first is Aiden Lang. Go Wildcats. All right. Thank you, Aiden. And also presented by Senor Escabi, also for fixing that classroom sharpener, Hudson Brock. You guys are available. I have some things at my house that could be repaired. If you want to come over after school, that'd be great. Go Wildcats. All right. And now our teacher doer. We can't forget our teacher doer. All right, let's see what we got. All right. Respect, one million. Responsibility, two million and one. Compassion, three million and eleven. Think about it. Integrity, four million and one hundred eleven. Reverence, five million one thousand one hundred and eleven. All right. You know him, you love him. Presented by Preston and Aiden, 8A, Mr. Glanzer! Go oh, Wildcats. All right, parents, come on down. Come on down. First, we're going to get our official picture. Parents, come right down behind them. Everybody smile. All right, keep smiling. Oh. All right, there we go. The official photographer. Keep moving. Keep moving. There we go. Everybody keep smiling. This will be all over the internet by 10 a.m. So make sure you're still smiling. Who knows? Maybe a model and acting coach someplace will see you. Give you a call. Keep smiling. Hashtag beautiful wildcats. It's trending. All right, we got more parent pictures. The paparazzi is not done with you. Keep smiling. All right, we're all set. Do as you can go back to your seats. Big round of applause. All right, we lost one already.